I've been tidying up this little bed. There's a few carrots and a couple of beetroots. Well, there's several beetroots still there. But I've had a wee bit of a problem. You see, I'll just show you. So if you look over here, you'll see this is Fennel City. And I like to leave the seeds on the plants because the birds like them and the insects like to live in the dead stalks. Unfortunately, about 7 million seeds have just sown themselves and the seedling is, let me find a seedling for you. At first glance, they really look very similar. So I've had to resort to tasting, weeding. So I've been looking a bit like a rabbit because if I pull it, I've already pulled the carrot. So I've been doing this taste as I go. So I'm clearing this space here because we want to extend the vegetable garden and have more vegetable and fruit growing space close to the house. Last year we made the mistake of growing too many things too far from the house. It's hard to water, it's too far away to be picking a handful of stuff for dinner. We want to keep, we want to go back to our motto, nearby veggies. This bit of land here, we call it the triangle. It's got quite a slope on it. So I'm going to make some mini terraces, use some of the motor logs we've got lying around, wood chip from the olive tree that we've pruned just here, make some small vegetable growing beds that are close to the house, easy to keep an eye on, easy to water, and because they're small, they're nice and manageable. It's never a daunting task to weed or plant a small bed. Trying to get a reasonable line for the edge of the bed so I know where I'm going with it. do nicely for our path, stop the weeds from growing. Just going to fill in with stones on top of the cardboard underneath the log just to hold the earth back a bit and stop the log from uh, washing so quickly. We can backfill this now, I don't think we need to go any higher. We're not trying to get raised beds here, just level up the ground a little bit. Raised beds just tend to dry out too much in this climate. You have to give them too much water. 
Well, the next path is going to go right here where I'm walking. Got a bit more digging out, a bit of uh, searching for logs. We've got plenty of trees, so it's not that hard. Uh, and then we'll have another little bed. So I need an eight foot log. I've got a pile of mimosa down over here. So let's go and have a look and see if I've got anything long enough. Yeah, this is a decent length. We took these logs out of the house last week. I think these are going to make a cracking piece of wall at the end of the triangle of mini terraces. So let's go and see how they fit. to level it out a little bit and I think that's going to work rather well. It's not a black iris, it's a black gladioli. Uh, How do I get on with this printing business? I forgot. Oh no! What? My secretary fell into the middle of the tree. Put down the hole? Yeah. Here's the magnet. Do you want me to have a look? <laughs> now somehow or other I need to hold all these together I've got a big pile of wood chip here sorry not wood chip branches to turn into wood chip I want to fill up the paths on the little mini terraces I've made on our triangle well that's it for chipping for now I'm going to go and see what Mairead's up to in the tree. I'm just trying to take out some of this thick growth to give, to give these shoots a chance and cut out any dead and crossing branches. Quite a nice view from up here. <laughs> right, time for a cup of tea. So I'm going to put a bit of compost on the new bed, or one of the new beds. We're using Ciro Agro 2 or Ciro Agro Deutsch. It is mainly horse manure mixed with some pine bark and it is organic. Marie's got some things to plant in here but she will tell you all about them. Oh it looks lovely, thank you. So that's the only peat-free compost, organic compost that we've been able to find around here. Um, and all of the peat of course comes from Irish peat bogs which causes me great pain. So here we go with this. We've used this last year when we definitely didn't have enough compost, but now it's a kind of a little treat to make the beds look nice. And I'm away to get my plants. So I've got some 
kohlrabi um, that we can eat and some Californian poppies that we can't eat. Got my pokey stick. I don't really need to be that far apart, you know. Don't know why I'm planting them that far apart. So these are a bluish purple variety. I've quite good germination. Here's some I planted earlier. Um, the last one now. Where is it? Oh, here. I think it's the last one. Oh yeah, that's. We have a, that for supper. For that's a cold, Robbie. I had two small sweets. Not so sure. Something else is starting to eat it. Dan has have a recipe that he uses, a Hugh Fernley Whittingstall recipe called Carpaccio of Kohl Rabbi. Essentially, it's just wafer thin slices of raw Kohl Rabbi drizzled with a very generous drizzle of olive oil, lemon juice, um, and lemon thyme and lemon rind. Did I miss something? Salt. Oh yes, salt. So first time he made it for me, we were in Hamble. And did I buy you the Hugh Friendly Wedding Store book? Yeah, for my birthday. <laughs> and every recipe he's been through. So I need a couple more steaks. I'm gonna go and have a look down in the cork forest where I've got a pile of mimosa. Let's see if I've got anything suitable I can cut a spike onto the end of. I love walking through the cork forest here. It's so, so beautiful at this time of year. Things are starting to grow. There's baby cork oaks, normal cork oaks, pine trees, madronos. I just love these massive cork trees. So this is my new strawberry bed. I bought some new strawberries today. Uh, some I bought about a month ago and I had planted in the vegetable garden. I planted 20 and I can only find seven. So I've decided they're all going to go together in the one space. And these ones were growing in under the fruit trees in the food forest. And they've done really well. However, the only people that eat them are birds. So for this year, they're going to be eaten by us. And as they grow and mature and spread, I'll move some of the runners back into the food forest. But I would like at least some food for us this year. Now I'm going to cover them in straw. Hey. What? That's my mulch there. Yeah. Of what? My cameras. <laughs> Sorry. What about here? Can I take yeah, this? You can take it all from over there, from the big pile there. What about here? Yeah, yeah. Quite a bit of earth and logs to hold back. They do. I think this was an old perch out of one of the uh, oh, yeah. chicken rooms. Straight? Good enough. Let's plant the violet queens. We've had people commenting that we should cut our potatoes. One of the local Portuguese people in our village had a little word with me about planting potatoes and said that I should chit them. Also, that I should cut them. So, I'm going to do that. I've done some chitting and they're not exactly huge chits, but they've chitted. These potatoes are called Violet Queens. They're a second early. But when you cut them, they're purple. Oops. And the best part about this is when you cook them, they stay purple. I don't know what that's going to go down like back in Ireland if I tell people I only eat purple potatoes. <laughs> the same no dig method, but this time there's no cardboard. They're going straight into little hollows in the ground, like something like that. And then we're going to cover them with shop-bought compost because at this stage, we're completely out of our own compost. We've used the most of the compost that we made 
on the main vegetable garden when we did the big refresh at Christmas time and also on the potato bed that you saw us do the no dig potatoes with the cardboard straw and our compost. I'm going to do the chit side up. Here comes the rain. Great, water in the potatoes. Yellow beetroot, red beetroot, and over there is the kohlrabi. And in here, I've got rows of carrots. And just backed up is more of that syringe. Next to the beetroot is a strawberry bed. Nothing planted in here yet or in the bottom one. I've turned this unused little triangle of land into a small collection of mini terrace vegetable beds so we can keep on growing more vegetables nearby. That's it for this week. We'll see you next time.